uh, can cause sometimes conflicts. Um, anyways, um, yeah, sure. so yeah. like we have a nice, really nice plan for today. Um, actually, I go in, in live, like you know, as a live session through the tutorial. Um, um, mostly through that, um, let's say, running snake make what results uh, you can expect. Then we analyze the network a little bit. Um, and then I'm showing you um, how we continue, um, like what else is possible in the pipes of framework, just to give you some inspiration. This is just my part. Uh, we try to do that in the next 50 or like 45 minutes. Uh, so uh, fingers crossed that everything works. Um, we have two other sessions, each one hour, one from Katya and one from Davide. Um, I just want to give you the general idea what's happening there. Uh, Davide will go with you through the whole architecture of Pipes of Earth a little bit. And, and also goes through, um, I mean, the hackathon material that we have. So today we cannot cover everything in this three hours. Um, but um, we give you also some tips and go through the material um, that we worked on in the past that can help you um, getting some other skills. And, and, and then uh, Katya, in the third session, she will um, mainly talk about um, what other learning materials is there um, beyond that hackathon material. Um, uh, she will show a little, um, like a little bit of the notebooks that we prepared, which you can use for your validation in your country uh, that might come actually really handy and reduce your validation time, you know, from from two months to a couple of weeks. Um, and yeah, um, she will definitely talk more about it later. Okay, so before starting now with the first part, are there any other questions? And by the way, today you can just also interrupt me anytime or any of us. Uh, between the sessions, we planned a 10 minutes Q&A anyways, but you can also just stop me somewhere and, and ask um, something. Okay, I'm just sharing my screen now. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. Awesome. Okay. Um, so we're starting actually here. So I'm in the Pipes of Earth documentation. How do I usually get there? I have here a bookmark. Um, check here the documentation. And that's how I get there. Um, you you have some nice introduction about Pipes of Europe, which is actually the, the, the tool we built the Pipes of Earth model uh, on top of. And um, really fantastic video from Fabian. I can highly recommend that. Um, but we are mostly now tackling the tutorial. So we are starting really at some parts of the installation. Okay. Um, the first step is here to clone a repository, so um, a GitHub repository. Um, I just want to do all the steps so that you actually see how it works. Um, basically, I would always recommend actually to fork, you know, like to fork the repository. Um, I'm, I'm having here an existing fork and, and why I'm, I'm working from the fork I just always check if it's updated. So a fork is practically a one-to-one -one copy of the original repository. Um, and I can change here in the fork things and can push it up to the original um, repository. So if I develop cool stuff, I say, hey guys, uh, um, do you want to take some of that? I can create a pull request from the fork and can contribute it. If the people don't like that, I can still have it on my fork and run it here. Okay, so instead of cloning the original repo, I always clone the fork. So I'm, I'm just doing that. Um, I prepared a folder called live demo. 
Um, I think the installation says um, follow follow the structure as given in the examples. And basically, we should set up a pipes of earth project folder. Uh, and within that, we have pipes of earth and the documentation. Okay, let's let's do that. So um, that's just my terminal. Um, I'm creating, I mean, there's you know, just some terminal comments in, in Windows, it might look different. I'm, I'm creating a directory called Pipes uh, Earth Project. With LS, I can check if it exists. Actually, you see, it's just creating that. So I'm, I'm just moving into it. So, and, and now actually we want to install uh, pipes of earth and pipes of earth documentation. Um, so I, I copied already. If you remembered here, the HTTPS uh, uh, cloning path, and I can just write here git clone. So now one package is coming. I hope my internet is good today. Um, cool. So that, that's one thing. Um, now you see in the Pipes Earth project, Pipes Earth is there now. Um, I also want the documentation. By the way, like if my voice is uh, sometimes not working correctly because my internet is bad, just tell me because I can just uh, get a wired connection to the internet as well. Okay, so I'm just cloning now the next the documentation. Okay, and while it's doing that, okay, um, opening VS code. So code dot dot means I, I want to open it now in the Pipes of Earth project. And you can see now here in the left, uh, perfect. Here's the documentation, Pipes of Earth. Um, great. So, um, um, so yeah. uh, yes. Uh, so is there any problem if we just, um, clone from this VS code terminal. Uh, you can also uh, get clone here. This is no problem, right? No like problem. So that is basically same, right? Yeah, it's it's basically. Same. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I am doing everything from the VS code. Okay, so mm -hmm. that's all right. Uh, like I was just you know, starting there and then I jumped to <laughs> VS code. You yes, can yes. also do the way around. It's uh, also possible. Um, by the way, like this cool design, if you're interested in the, that is uh, set sh. Um, I can share a link. Um, <laughs> maybe later. Uh, but I mean, if, if, if you Google set sh, then you find um, how to get a cool terminal. Okay, so let's see the instructions. Um, Okay, there's a you know part where we should install all the um, dependencies. Um, I won't go through that. Like I, I have a running dependency at the moment. Um, just tested it uh, yesterday. Um, but here, I mean, obviously, it's, it's really depending on you know what is on your computer. Maybe some of that stuff might raise conflicts. Uh, unfortunately. Um, you know, like sometimes you can just install something wrong. Like this could actually really get a little bit easier, but uh, with great power comes also a great risk of. Uh, Max, actually, uh, you, you, you should um, basically, if you please uh, show this installation, because actually you are facing problem here. 
you know i know so i have uh, go through the all the steps still if you show how it uh, yeah. you will do it um, no need okay. basically that uh, okay. just step by step so because this is yeah. this this here it it creates problem you know okay okay um yep then let's try it um <coughs> so i think so you can check first of all i'm, I'm checking now um conda enfless i'm not sure ah yeah perfect <laughs> um like i can check you know which environments do i have on my um in, in my conda um so and i have already pipes of earth um at the moment actually i'm, I'm using pipes of africa by default um because like, I mean, that's my um, stable version, but let's remove observe. Process that takes a little bit of time. Um, could not. Uh, okay. So what I'm usually doing is conda remove uh, environment. I'm just googling how to do that. So I'm I'm also not perfect. I just need to Google constantly. It's it's really um, it's really important. Okay, so it's removing now all the packages. Um, so now I'm in the base environment, okay? Like that's really important, you're in the base environment. Um, then you should have Mamba installed. So let's check if I have Mamba, I should have it. Actually Mamba is, is not really necessary. You can also directly install in Conda. Um, but Mamba is uh, um, like 10 times faster, uh, but maybe can also cause conflicts. Maybe that's exactly sort of the, the problem we have here. That um, uh, Max, are you uh, installing Mamba in the base environment? Um, yeah, yeah. Like in the base environment, this is important. Um, I'm I'm seeing here actually I, I could update Conda as well yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, base environment so uh, already is it activate your Conda? Yeah. So in, in some time in, in some computers it's not active <sighs> from the beginning and you need to activate Conda. Yeah yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah yeah. Like uh, by source activate or something like that. Yeah yeah yeah. Um, okay. I honestly see that maybe I should. This can also be, you know, create conflicts. Actually, I should. Yeah, update. I am using this version, twenty-two point nine. Okay. Uh, like that's it's good. Um, maybe I should do that as well. Um, like for the sake because it costs <clears throat> time, I will just um, install it now. Here, so I I, I have Mamba already. This is just a warning. It's not an error. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it said solving is done. All requested packages are already there. Okay, so, so members. Uh, can you there. see? It, uh, can you uh, show me the what is the version of the Mamba? Yeah. Is it one point zero? So Conda list shows what's in there. Um, Mamba. 076. So now, right now, I'm using basically 1.0.0 .0 is maybe it is creating conflict. I, th I, th I think um, possibly. <laughs> like sometimes, sometimes the newer version cannot be used, you know, and you have to downgrade something. Um, yeah. Like to and, be uh, sure. Like and and at that at the time of installing, it is basically downgrading so many packages. Mamba. 
when I am trying to in installing it, uh, so many packages are uh, downgraded. Right? Yeah. That means, yes. Um, like why they're downgraded, uh, sir? That's a good question. Is um, because you know, for example, let's say Mooncrest. <laughs> not sure what it is doing actually. Let's say or, or number. You know, that's the um, like it makes. Um, NumPy and, and that kind of stuff super fast. Um, basically, some package, and th this is a package itself, you know, it's like Pipes of Earth, another package. Um, and some of them have constraints, and we have them as well. We <clears throat> say, you know, like we say here in our environment, uh, we need to use Python <laughs> higher than 3.8. Or we don't, you know, don't use uh, or like use matplotlib matplotlib below the certain uh, version because you know the higher version was unstable, and this is why things are downgraded sometimes because one of the packages have a constraint like this. Uh, I see. I see. Okay, so it's it's not nothing to 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 worry about. It's, it's like normal that um, that is happening. But version conflicts can sometimes happen, and um, but yeah, like so uh, we can investigate that definitely later. And uh, thanks for the question. Um, just want to show you how I would install now uh, pipes. Uh, like I'm, I'm making now by you know I'm making our mistake. Just want to show you that. Okay. Um, the environment YAML was not found. Of course not, because I'm actually still in the Pipes of Earth project. So I need to move into Pipes of Earth first. And then there is, like, this is Pipes of Earth. Yeah. Um, here's an EMS, there's an EMS uh, folder. And there's also, an, an, there's the file inside, right? So, oops. Okay, um, so that's how I would install things. Um, yeah, and, and then I'm, I'm really just writing conda activate and so on, and then it should run. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm just stopping all that process because it takes a little bit of time and we need to move on. So, I hope that works now. Not sure. Uh, con conda activate. So Africa, like that's what I tested yesterday. So I'm moving on. It should be pipes to earth in your case, and in, in the pipes to Africa uh, environment. Um, by the way, maybe I should just increase everything. Is that better for you? <laughs> yeah, I think you wouldn't complain about having it a bit. A larger. Okay. Um, so the plan. Max, uh, when when suppose we want to run the model for the India, so then is it there? You have to create another environment for India, like Pipesa no, India. No, 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 just from the Pipesa Earth, you you can find exactly, it. absolutely. So that should work uh, globally, um, and it's like a model creator Pipesa Earth. So for uh, why then uh, why for Pipesa Africa or Pipesa Europe you have created a separate uh, you know so it's it's really just a legacy issue like thanks sir, for the question um, why do we have so many models actually we started the colleagues started in Europe because there was good data and there's their research interest um, and actually because that model was really well structured and you know like i felt it's it's cool to have um like a couple of people thought okay let's uh, extend it to a to an african scale you know just an exercise and then actually while we were doing this african model with the colleagues here the, uh, david and katya we found out okay we are using global data um actually the model that nice architecture is now available um also everywhere around the world so it was just a you know, evolution. We just took a European model, um, used it for Africa, gained experience of extending it, and now we extend it to the to the globe. 
basically with the idea, okay, any country can be represented in detail in Pipes of Earth. Okay, okay. Um, I see. And, and, and that means like we can share, you know, like if you develop something in India or we something in, in uh, Germany, UK, any improvement, we're going to share the code base. And, you know, like the main functional improvements, you benefit from them as well. So that was the idea on a global thing. Okay. Okay. Cool. So. Um, I can just check my Java version. Okay, I have apparently Java over OpenJDK. Um, in Windows, you have to install it manually. Um, I'm, I'm testing also quickly if I have, uh, like I'm using uh, Gurobi, we have an academic license. Okay, I don't have Gurobi. <laughs> Um, right. Um, so I would need to, you know, correct my Groby stuff uh, as a solver, but I think I should have a GLPK or something like that. Um, I think you can, I mean, you can check it. And uh, if I Google it, there's a command like um, JPK V for version, and then you can check the version. Um, but yeah, let's move on. Um, so getting started, so we have about 30 minutes left. Um, okay, what we need to do is copying the config tutorial. So the config tutorial is a really uh, just a small configuration file. Uh, it, it takes Nigeria and Benin uh, into consideration. Um, by the way, if I add here, like I, in the tutorial, I shouldn't really add anything <laughs> because it's really targeted. You know, we get the data only for specific region in a small volume um, such that it runs fast. Um, Davide will chat later a little bit more, bit more about all these options which are here. Um, so what I'm doing now, I can just copy it manually by hand, you know, just here. Actually, I'm, I'm, I'm just doing it like that now. Yeah. Easy. Um, another way would be over the terminal, and this is the, the Linux command for, for doing that. Um, okay, and now I just need to run snake make minus J, or I can write, okay, like I just write it how it's written here. So, so J1 means actually I'm using one CPU. Um, if I write eight, it, it uses eight CPUs. Um, and solve all networks means that the whole process will be run. I'm usually doing a dry run just to see if everything works. This was a dry run. Okay, I'm, I'm seeing here that 21 steps program, Python scripts are triggered by this. Um, yeah, and basically that's fine. Like I, I'm aware of that, that this is a normal number and then I'm running that thing, just using a little bit more CPU, such that it runs faster. Okay, so uh, fingers crossed that this works now. Let's see. Um, in the meantime, we go through the notebook. So I'm, I'm just, Okay, we run now the tutorial. Now we are analyzing it. It's a really nice video from Fabian on how to analyze it. And I can also see that here um, we have a tutorial example that we share in the notebook repository. Max, I'll, I'll, um, I'll stop here because uh, yeah. you have run it in eight CPU. That means uh, 
Now, what is the, you know, specification of all the CPUs? Can you tell me? Because it will again be a problem to run the uh, model if we have not that proper specification. Oh, like you can just run it with one CPU. It's no problem. Okay. So why eight CPUs? That means, um, is it the core? Core of the CPUs? Yeah. Exactly. So it's, it's just uh, making things faster. Like you can run in parallel certain certain things, right? Okay, okay, okay. So that means you are running in parallel eight thread. Okay. Yep, absolutely. Okay. And and it's flexible. Like if you have a you know cloud machine, you can run, um, I don't know, forty CPUs. Okay, okay, okay. Um, and 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 in that way, you can run huge, really huge operations and uh, run a, a massive experiments. Okay, just switching now the internet because I had a little issue. Um, maybe I'm breaking up for a moment. Can you hear me? Some now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Awesome. Like I'm, I'm cabled now. <laughs> Wired connection. So now we are analyzing quickly the notebook, and I just want to tell you that we have a a notebook repository, and there's a sample network analysis uh, file. So that's exactly in the documentation part in the notebooks thing, uh, notebooks folder. And there's the sample network analysis. I'm zooming now a little bit out again. So this is a Jupyter notebook, uh, IP, Y, and B. Um, here's just a reminder on how the structure needs to be. And I think we have the structure now. What is important with the notebooks is always, um, you need to pick your kernel and you need to pick which environment you're using. I tested everything in, in Pipes South Africa. Um, so this should run smoothly. It just gets a couple of packages uh, required for that exercise. Actually, you don't need to have a solved, you know, like you see here that stuff is still loading, it takes some time. You don't need a soft network because Anna's, uh, kindly shared something on Zenodo. Um, so I'm just loading one from the web. Yeah. Um, and it will load all these networks here. Okay, so let's see if it works. Yeah, cool. So pipes and network, uh, can load, it's, it's a Pipesa object. It's from a Pipesa framework, the, an object, and it can load NC files that are produced uh, by Pipesa. So an NC file uh, or net CFD file is at the end um, an object um, that contains a lot of, let's say in easy words, CSVs. It has a lot of data tables in, implemented, but it's much easier to access like, uh, you will be really happy actually using that .nc file instead of CSVs. First, it's faster, um, and, and and second, it's like the structure is quite nice. Um, so we loaded that uh, file. Um, we can plot the network, and you see here some little dots. Um, I mean, that's a five bus network now, um, and these dots is a bug. <laughs> So um, this isn't bug. We we have an issue on on GitHub on that. Uh, so over the time, I don't know when through a change, some uh, this suddenly appeared. Um, but we are fixing that. Um, like we are aware of what it is. Just need to find time to fix it. Um, so five five bus network. Um, then. Yeah, what I want to show you is how to actually analyze this network. And n dot 
generators.pnomopt had to how the hell do I remember this? <laughs> I don't. Um, so I actually, I mean, some of it I can remember, but I look always uh, in the pipeset documentation. Um, so just to, sorry, just to give you a sense where I can find the pipeset documentation, I always go in the GitHub repo and then there's a read the docs documentation um, uh, document linked. Um, and yeah, just going here to the components. Um, and now I can see all these objects which are part of that net CFD fund, like where all the CSVs are in. That's the you know, pipes object. And I can see, okay, in this object, there are network, there's a sub network, there's bus, there's a carrier and so on. And we just looked at the generator. So now we're looking in the object generator. I can also access all the other things in that object. Okay, so the generator has a pnom opt. Where do I find that? Um, I just go here on the generator documentation. And then I see actually all the attributes that the generator have with an explanation on what it is about. So let's have a look into pnom opt. Pnom opt. It's actually an output. Okay, so it's an output of the optimization. Before the optimization, this thing was zero, didn't exist. Um, so the network that we have is in the one after the optimization. And had two means just, you know, we, we're checking out the first two examples. I can also, can just show you the full table, yeah. Um, or the first 10 examples, we just changing that. Um, but yeah, basically what does it do? It shows, okay, here on wind solar, uh, what is that? It's the optimized nominal power. Um, it's actually, for example, that this is in Nigeria, right? That's the optimized amount of generators in Nigeria at this different locations and this location is BJ15. Um, okay, just to you know, give you some sense of what's going on here. Um, Anna's mentioned here also that we, we were accessing generators. That's a static component. Static means no time series. It means, you know, the install amount of something. Um, it's really a static infrastructure thing. The generator underscore T, and by the way, that thing was not invented by Anas, uh, uh, who tuned the tutorial a little bit. It's really everything written here in, in the Pipesa documentation. Um, time varying data underscore T. It, it basically shows you um, the power outputs. And I just want to show you as well in, sorry, in the components generators, um, static or series, static or series. A series is always a time series. And we can actually now output a power time series as well by just, you know, typing in. underscore T. And now we get for every bus, for every hour, the optimized power time series. Uh, so it's a dis dispatch signals, right? Okay. Um, so far, so good. Just want to show you that there are a lot of different components that you can access. Um, here's an example of, of the lines. Um, and everything here, again, we have documentation for that. And that's so helpful. 
so for each object, you have a documentation on you know, what is used, reactive power, active power, subnetworks, um, whatever your dreams desire. Um, storage units are there. Stores is something special. So a storage unit is a fixed unit. Um, you know, like a battery cannot, some people model that not scalable. Uh, so meaning that um, the charger, discharger and store unit need to be the um, same size. You cannot flexibly scale that, you know, it's, it's like um, this, like same storage duration. But actually, if we model things with a store plus a, a link, um, we can actually size things differently. We can size the charger, this charger, and the store unit flexibly. Um, so this is also, you can imagine it as a, yeah, storage. It's the storage tank, you know, the water tank or hydrogen tank. Okay, then there are loads, all static values here. Um, but yeah, load is actually time dependent. That's why we have you know static value. But a base load can be modeled here. You know, if you give here a static value. Um, here, time varying components. Yeah, the load uh, varies every hour for every bus. Um, here's one picture on on how the load looks like, uh, and so on. What else do we have? Generation. Um, we can see how much did that Nigerian system cost. Um, so you have here the objective as uh, two point six billions in this case. And we can see what is the amount of transmission line expansion. Um, I think that number looks really, really small. Um, might be um, like I wouldn't trust uh, if this amounts are correct because they're also negative here. Um, I think that's a, a like a numerical um, issue here. Um, maybe because the tutorial, like the tutorial example, looked at three weeks, I guess, and in three weeks, I think no transmission expansion was necessary in this case. Um, you can see which carriers are here, um, like as you know, which technologies are implemented um, and so on. And, and what is new, we have also statistics. So in that network object, you can just call statistics and you see quickly on, on one shot, how much uh, you know generators were installed, what are the lines and so on. Uh, so it's it's really really nice. It it helps you getting a quick overview. Okay, and and that's the kind of tutorial. Um, that's that's the optimized amount in, in gigawatts, and 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 like the operation, the operation of the units. Um, and there's a lot of other material you can further explore, but that's where I want to stop with the. Um, tutorial part now. We actually see, that's nice, uh, the network solved. So the question is, where are the solved networks? I think David will talk a little bit more about that. But here's the network. It's in results networks. That's the solved optimized network, okay? The not optimized network, uh, you know, the before the whole infrastructure was optimized, you can find it here in the just network folder. And then how and then how it also you know gets data and, and um it's getting cleaned. There are various steps happening in the process. Okay, and actually we can theoretically open each of them with the just calling them. You know, just calling them here at the beginning, types the network. Um, and I can just change here a little bit the name and, and call the network. Okay. Um, 
Okay, let's um, maybe spend uh, three minutes or so for questions here. Like, are there any questions? If, if not, we go through a couple of examples on what is possible with the types of core framework. Alien? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I got a question. Uh, can you go back to the graph of the generation and demand? Yep, sure. I think I saw that the, the demand was greater than the generation. I don't understand why. Mm. Six minus six. Huh. That's, a, that's a tricky question. Uh, uh, it, it should always match. Like it, it needs to match, actually. Ah, okay. I think what is missing here, like we forgot to add one more generation type. Uh, it's the hydro, right? Um, Oh, ah, okay, okay, I get it. But good, like good spot. <laughs> um, like we didn't show the hydro part. Like we have here this dam, storage unit, reservoir, and dam. Um, actually, we need to fix that. Really good point. Um, but yeah, basically there would be another small unit, um, the hydrogen dam, uh, creating that extra. Okay, thank you. Uh, really uh, well thought. <laughs> um, like the model would not optimize if if demand and supply does not match. Like you get an optimization error. Okay. Any other questions? Max, there's a question in the chat. Do you see okay. it? When no. you run the snake make, did it mm -hmm. show show no parameters matching test found? So I think that it's just a normal situation when uh, one of the installed packages is a little bit verbose, right? Like what was the question? Sorry. Um, when you run the snake make, it shows no parameters matching test found. Is it all right? Um, is it, is it uh, here, this one? Mm, yeah. Somewhere, yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, good point. Like, where does that come from? Um, I th like, this is not a problem. Um, it's just a little warning, but I honestly need to investigate where it comes from. My impression uh, is Gorobi. Could, could be Gorobi as well. I mean, like this is Gorobi. This is Gorobi. But on the other hand, I like we couldn't find Gorobi, but it should be Gorobi. <laughs> uh, anyways. Um, I mean, in the past, I could you know, test if Gorobi works like that. Yeah. Anyways, um, maybe he doesn't like me today. Um, cool. Uh, are there any other questions in the chat or in general? Not yet. Okay, perfect. Then we just move on. So this is really a part of the side. Oh, Jesus. This is a part of just inspiring what is possible, but um, not all of it is necessarily now included in Pipes of Earth, but it gives you an idea actually on how we can improve Pipes of Earth and in which aspects. Um, and that's where uh, the route we're developing. So maybe some of you are aware of uh, unit commitment uh, constraints uh, that are I think never tested it in Pipes of Earth, but it should be possible uh, already because Pipes of Europe has it as well. Unit commitment constraints mean that you add some extra variables. You know, what is the uh, minimum uptime 
a coal plant needs to run for a certain um, amount to yeah, be stable because you, you're not allowed to cycle too much with a coal plant. It's not good from a thermal uh, perspective. And, and I mean, there's physical stability of the whole plant. Same with the minimum downtime. If you shut down a coal plant, it needs to stay down for a while. Um, with the starting up a coal plant, you need to start heating the, you know, the, you, you need to start the incineration process and, and that needs some extra fuel. Um, and so there are costs associated with that and, and similar with the shutdown costs sometimes. And you cannot, a coal plant cannot ramp up from zero to 100% in one hour. Um, it needs to slowly go up there just for the sake of stability of the uh, power plant. So um, with these variables, actually, we can run a, um, uh, you know, a unit commitment uh, constraint um, some uh, optimization. Um, I just want to show you how it works, for example, and you know, that you see that it works. Um, here it says, um, what is the minimum part load demonstration? And in, in final, our load goes below part load, forcing gas to commit. Okay. So we have here the coal. Um, the, 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 like the coal activation. Um, and it's it's the status is on, like the coal plant is on, and then the last hour it's it's off. Um, and here coal is running and then gas will run as well. So basically, okay, now I understand it. <laughs> um, there's a load, you know, you have to supply this amount. But over the whole period, the minimum amount the gas plant needs to run is 0.1% of that capacity. So at least uh, 100 uh, megawatts need to be um, used. Um, like over the whole uh, optimization period. And that's why we can see here, okay, I mean, it, it just runs gas. Okay, minimum uptime. Um, so I think it says, it takes, okay, like the uh, coal plant, or like minimum uptime on the gas is three time steps. So actually, okay, I, th I think we cannot see that here quite nice. Anyways, like sometimes it's a bit, honestly, a bit complicated. <laughs> um, minimum uptime zero. Min, uh, sorry, uptime before is zero. Minimum uptime is three hours for gas. So if gas runs, it should run at least for three hours. It's not doing that. Okay, yeah, I'm not sure what's happening here now, but let's, like I just checked two examples and I think, okay, what's happening here? Um, anyways, minimum downtime, um, two hours for coal, uh, coal. So if it's shutting down, it needs to be down for two hours. <laughs> This is not happening here somehow. Minimum downtime. Okay. Um, I don't know, actually, maybe it's working. Maybe it's working. Anyways, um, let's not jump into the details. We have unit commitment constraints. It's working usually. I think I just uh, didn't comprehend that in, in that quick time. 
Uh, I just want to show you that uh, we also have a read dispatch of um, potentials uh, in, in that model. So we can do a two stage market clearing. Um, what is the two stage market clearing? So at the first we have um, like the way we set it up is, is a, you know, like nodal pricing uh, scenario where each node gets a price. Then you actually um, build your first market like you build a market with bidding zones um in, in germany we have for example uh north south bidding zones um so what it, um we're doing here is just splitting that uh, everything north is one bidding zone, so everything below is another bidding zone um and then um and that was quite interesting okay so if you just have a market clearing um, with two bidding zones in Germany, the system is quite cheap. So the market thinks, okay, we just need to operate for 214,000 euros. Um, and actually the nodal pricing, which you know uh, assumes a perfect market, the perfect exploitation of constraints and that kind of stuff. It's really the perfect operation of the system is more expensive. So two bidding zones are more expensive than a nodal market clearing. And actually that makes sense because a, a two bidding zone clearing, um, it does not see the internal constraints of the transmission lines. So you cannot see, you know, what are your transmission line restrictions? Um, and basically we, um, what you can do then, you know, like you, you get your market clearing and the TSO in, in many countries in the world, maybe also in your country, um, after the market clears, you know, in this imperfect market, um, you actually have a redispatch afterwards. And that's the transmission system operators um, job. Um, and what they do is then turning up some plants in the north, turning down some plants in the south to remove some of the transmission constraints that really exist in the system. And this can be modeled as well, like as an example. And, and here you see, um, you know, like what, what are, like that's the market clearing, okay? Some plants are ramped up and some parts, uh, some power plants are ramped down, really just to avoid the um, physical constraints. And then what is the, you know, how much does this uh, system cost now after the redispatch? I think, um, I think, uh, yeah, exactly. So the costs are exactly the same as in the nodal pricing before. If we do redispatch perfectly, the costs are the same as in the nodal pricing. Um, and that kind of exercise you can do with that. But now actually, that was just a demonstration. If, if you, you know, implement some um, other bidding strategies, you basically end up with more costs. So you, you know, your generators are earning a little bit more money. Um, and that's often happening in, 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 in a real market um, with the spitting zones that they somehow profit from that uh, behavior. Anyways, that's something you can explore. Just like we need to wrap up now, uh, my part. Um, we have um, nonlinear power flow after the LEO, uh, LOPF. So we have a linearized optimal power flow. This is really important for your transmission system operator. So if you have just a transport model, um, your transmission system operator will say, okay, I don't need your model results. I don't trust them. How can we prove that the system is stable and that kind of stuff? Um, and that's why um, NSOE and other TSOs uh, uh, like adapted this tools. Um, I mean, Switch has also this LOPF capabilities. Um, I think also the AC power flow capabilities, but yeah, you can run power flow afterwards and see if your system is stable under every time step. 
And here you can see the line loading with reactive and active power, I think. Uh, reactive power feed. So you can really check the um, stability. We have multi investment optimization. So we can look into a whole, in, you know, in a perfect foresight way or myopic foresight way um, until a future 2050. And we can optimize that in, in our hourly resolution uh, with, you know, this several um, um, years that we want to keep track on, on the infrastructure, 2020, 2025, 2030, that kind of stuff. And we can optimize it as one big problem. Um, just want to show you that we have sector coupling capabilities. By the way, all the examples, all the things I'm talking about, and there's way more, it's all given here. Yeah, in the examples, like have a look, uh, find something interesting. Um, sector couple capabilities, heat and power can be optimized at the same time. We can just run a you know, battery, like you can optimize your home, how to charge your battery with a PV plant. Um, what was that? Um, oh yeah, biomass. Um, biomass, synthetic fuels and carbon management. Um, we can be carbon negative uh, with, uh, you know, if you sequestrate the biomass uh, CO2, you can be carbon negative and, and that kind of stuff can be um, modeled as well. So we can take care of this carbon management. And yeah, that was just a co-optimization between heat and, and electricity. This is possible. Um, a little note, the, the model we are playing around now in, in this pipes earth exercise, Will mostly focus on the power sector, uh, but colleagues are already developing in, in Morocco uh, under the Pipes Earth framework the sector coupled capabilities, which are already available for Europe. Um, and that's um, where I'm stopping now. Um, are there some questions? Are you still here? Uh, ah, okay. Hi, Max. Yeah. Sorry. Hi, Max. I have a, a question. Um, okay. So uh, for the biomass uh, thing, you showed that we can optimize the CO2 um, something, CO2 management and stuff. So I was wondering, is it possible to optimize other greenhouse gases also or just CO2? Absolutely. We can also uh, model other greenhouse gases. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I mean, the best way would be always to convert, you know, like make them one unit. CO2 make, equivalent, right? Exactly. Like yeah. that's something uh, which I would recommend, but you can also optimize it separately. Mm -hmm. And and for that, we use the 100-year uh, time horizon uh, GWP data, no? Global warming potential data for making it equivalent or do we use uh, lesser years also? Um, so I think what you will use regarding carbon management uh, is up to you. Like if, if you decide, um, like if you have your modeling exercise, you know, this is about training and, um, and, and support, um, mm -hmm. um, like it's, it's then really up to you how you use the tools. And um, what I, I mean, what I would love to have in Pipes of Earth is if we have, you know, the, we are, I mean, the carbon, there's no borders. Um, mm -hmm. If we have a carbon management, a whole, like across the world um, and, and running in that way in optimization, knowing, okay, um, like, India or any other country needs to have this certain goals so that we as a global community can achieve our goals. Um, and yeah. Like some sort of a carbon budget sort of thing so mm -hmm. that we can see the understood. Right. Okay, thank you, thank yeah. you. Thanks for the question. Okay, three.
Um, another question, uh, Thuy, do you want to open your mic? To the right, that it's not, not possible to unmute. Ah, okay. It's it's not possible, like I tried. Uh, usually the owner cannot change the mute. Maybe, um, have you checked the settings? Maybe it's a matter of settings of the um, audio. Mm, this is weird because the others unmuted themselves as well somehow, right? Otherwise, you may write the question. Mm -hmm. okay. Where is the chat? Here? Ah, uh, chat. Uh, what, uh, what, what, what is the input data? Um, how can I see the details of all input parameters? They, like you can investigate them all. Um, like we definitely, um, Katya will uh, sh show something more about that. Um, but we have Jupyter notebooks and all those notebooks you saw that actually help you exploring the inputs because that can be also time consuming. And you can also, you know, if you're not happy with some of the input data, we also always recommend to improve it in the global databases. Um, and, um, if you need a study, you know, in the next three months, you can just use, uh, you can just stream in your input data. If you didn't like, you know, the, uh, the ones we are using. Okay. No worries. Thanks to you. Get a couple of issues with snake make. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Cool. Then um, I'm just handing over now to uh, Davide. Um, I think I need to stop sharing now. Thank you very um, much, Max. Yep. Yep. Uh, thank you uh, for as introduction and David Fioriti, uh, our work at the University of Pisa, I'm co-director of the initiative uh, together with Max and uh, in particular I'm